that the stone was not rolled away to let Jesus out. The stone was rolled away to let us in. Yeah, y'all yeah, remember that. Well, it's good to see y'all here this evening. center that so that the camera is able to zoom in or whatever. And that's the story I've got. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this evening. I thank you for every time we as a church can come together and break bread. A unique time. Once a month, we can break bread. I thank you, Father, that we've come together to break bread with you. Because with the worship we've heard, your presence is real. The Holy Spirit, I ask that you assist me in articulating the word of God so that your people can take it in and use it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Yes, question mark, no. How many have been in a situation where you said yes, and you wish you'd said no. Okay. Two. Okay. Let me run that by you one more time. How many times have you said yes when you, looking back on it, should have said no? There you go. Now, now we have five. Pray, praise God. Oh, okay, that's okay. You know, what, what I want to speak with you tonight about, and it's going to be short, so you're going to have to kind of pay attention. It's not that you don't. From the very beginning of our life, we begin to make decisions. We make decisions to get up out of bed, to eat, go potty, get dressed, go to work, go to school. We make decisions. And we make decisions every day from the very beginning every day all kinds of decisions decision on coming to church tonight and a lot of times those decisions are good decisions and they work out well and then there are times and i won't ask for a show of hands but there are, there are times that our decisions just didn't work out one oh, okay so the rest of us are pretty prophetic. <laughs> so, I'm looking at Jesus, and I'm reading the Word, and I'm thinking he's, He is my model. He is my example. I, I wondered at that point, did Jesus make decisions as he went into a town and there was a leper that came up and wanted to be healed, did Jesus have to make a decision as to whether he was going to heal that person or not? The answer to that's very simple. The decision was made when the lamb was slain from the foundation because that was when he said, I'm going to love them and I'm going to accept them, period. And from that day forward, every action that he ever took was because he loves us and, and he's looking to take care of us. There is a interesting thing here. Jesus made a decision out of obedience to get water baptized. He made the decision out of obedience to go into the desert and it took 40 days for that conflict to come to an end. The conflict between the spirit man and the flesh man. 40 days. And finally, the spirit man, the Holy Spirit, was victorious. 
So, Jesus wants to include us in what he discovered and knew in the very beginning, and that is that if you will make a decision, see, God can't do a whole lot until we make a decision. Whether it's a right one or a wrong one, either way, you got to make a decision. You have to either yes or a no. And so when we put off making decisions, sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it just seems to come together and you didn't have to get in tangled in it and then sometimes you're supposed to be right in the middle of it and we're disobedient we don't do nothing we're indecisive we don't want to make a decision what if we make the wrong decision i want to live my life i don't know how many more years i've got but i want to live the rest of my life surrendering my decision making to the holy spirit and you know what rushes you into a decision Time. We have to make that decision right now. Or well, we're not going to go out to eat until Friday. Could I mean, could we? I mean, this is Wednesday. I mean, do I have to make a decision today on where we're going to go out to eat Friday? The answer to that, of course, is yes. Just so that we have the scripture, Matthew 5, 33 through 37, it says, again, you have heard that it was said, now listen to this tradition that Christ is about to uh, bury. It says, again, you have heard that it is said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord your vows you've made. But I tell you the truth, do not swear an oath at either heaven or in God's throne or by the earth or by his footstool or Jerusalem for it is the city of the great king and do not swear by your head listen to that statement for you cannot even one hair make or black or white all you need to say is simply yes or no Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. So what did that look like for Jesus? I asked, did he have to make any decisions? He made the one decision, and that was to die for us and, and love us the way we are, and the Father sent the Holy Spirit. What I need you to see is that everything flowed with the Lord because he'd made that one decision in the very beginning that irregardless, he was going to love us and forgive us. That decision of, I choose to remember your sin no more, that was done, that was decided back at the slain of the lamb. You know why? Elder Fred has reoccurring struggles with stuff because Elder Fred has never made the decision to give it to the Holy Spirit and let him handle it. I'm working on it. But if you're getting sick and tired of being sick and tired of stuff in your life, it's real simple. You've just never made the decision. Because like I said, until you make a decision God's just waiting. If you screw it up and it's the wrong decision, he is waiting to fix it. If it's a good decision, he's waiting to bless it, but he's waiting for us to make a decision. We made a decision when we accepted him. We made a decision to get water baptized. Some of us has, have made the decision to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some of us haven't. And either way makes no difference. Christ still loves you and you're going to spend eternity with me and everybody else that loves him. Mm -hmm. 
this is a this is a hard area in our flesh to deal with because guys we've been making decisions I mean I had to make the decision to you know get dressed come to church work on the sermon before I got here I mean I made a lot of decisions and and that's all fine and good and I hope it all works out But I want to say this. Jesus made the decision to love us irregardless. In Philippians 4, verse 6 through 7, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God, and the God of peace will surpass all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. We need, Elder Fred needs, and I need you to, in, to join me in this, that we make the decision tonight that we don't have to mess with it. He'll mess with it for us. He'll carry that burden for us. But until we make the decision to do that, he's going to do nothing. Well, I want the Lord to do this. Fine. Make the decision that whatever he comes up with is what you're willing to accept. Well, we say that. What about the garden? Huh. I thought he was totally surrendered. And Well, yeah, yeah. Want to see how that worked out? He goes to the garden and falls down and asks the Father to take it from him. That was his flesh talking. And then the Holy Spirit kicks in and says, but not my will, but yours. And because he was a human being, just like you and I are, he went back for a second time to run that back by the Father one more time. Father, if this cup could pass from me, that'd just be awesome. But if not, your will and not mine. Third time round, he goes back one more time. You're, you're reading what the experience was of his flesh warring against his spirit. His flesh wanted to stay. Spirit knew, no, that's not how it's going to work out. We're the same way, guys. It's okay. It's okay to have a flesh moment. <laughs> yeah. I, w I would guess if, if I were to try to guess, I'm about... In my spiritual walk, I'm probably 17% in the spirit and the rest of the flesh. I've just learned how to keep my mouth shut so I don't look so stupid. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, honesty is the best policy. So, in James 1, verse 5, it says, If any one of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. And who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you again. I'm going to use this as an example. Y'all know that I'm not Mr. Mechanic. I know what a wrench is. I think I can figure out where you use it, but I mean, okay, so most of the time, if I've got a problem at the house, this last issue was a toilet that was running water. $137 worth of water, the toilet's running water. So I figure out that I've got to tackle this issue. I'm not a plumber. I am smart enough to understand you gotta turn the water off to get started. Okay, that, I mean, that was a big deal. I will not share with you because of my pride, but I made more than one trip to the True Value Hardware Store to get the right parts to fix this toilet. I was being very unsuccessful. I had not gotten the proper part, and so you gotta 
See, when you get my age, you got to get wise. You got to open these puppies up so you can return it. If you just rip it open, there ain't no way to put everything back together and, you know, make it look, you know, and take it back and say, I want my money back. So I've learned how to be very careful on how you take that baby apart because the odds are it ain't the right part in the first place. So I've learned that. Now, every once in a while, I have to pull out the staple gun on the top so it doesn't fall out when you take it, right? This has happened, I don't know how many times, hundreds. I couldn't figure it out. I said, okay, Lord. Jesus admitted that he can't do it on his own. So here I am. I can't do it on my own. I need your help. And he goes, you go buy a flapper kit and be done with it. <laughs> okay. Go in. True value. You got a flapper kit? You know, I'm thinking these people don't think I'm an idiot. Oh, yeah, it's right over here on aisle seven. I don't know how many miles. I don't know how much gas. I don't know how much whatever it was I put into the effort if I had just made the decision in the beginning, I can't do it. I want to encourage you tonight. Oh, I mean, are we, are we close to feeding? Well, you know, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I can take a hint. How, however, prior to us eating, we are going to be honored to rejoice in a baptism. <laughs> Who that is and who's going to baptism? Baptize them, baptism, sweet Jesus. Oh, okay, so we, so we have two. Here comes another. Here comes a family. While they're getting ready, just in case you missed the point of the sermon, if you don't make a decision, God cannot move. He's waiting on you to make a decision on whatever that may be. Amen to that. All right. I had the honor of baptizing my three children that was a long time ago Is there anybody else that wants to make a decision about getting water baptized? All right, then. If y'all will stand up, please. Father, we thank you for another soul baptized into the kingdom. I thank you, Father, that you've come and that you're going to break bread with us, Lord Jesus. You went to every house that invited you. We're inviting you tonight to come and dine, break bread, heal, deliver, as your will would be. Come, King Jesus. And thank you, Father, for uh, an awesome election. Amen. <laughs>